You know what they say, you don't really miss something until it's gone, and I miss my nails. Today I'm doing a reverse French. We're experiencing a storm here on the west coast, so if a tree comes through the window, we're gonna keep rolling. Let's get started. So I've prepped this one by filing it. I've done all four fingers, and I'm just going to prep the one more finger to show you how to do it. I use this safety bit, it's a carbide bit. It's meant to go around near the cuticle, not on the cuticle, but near the cuticle, and it's meant to um, prep the natural nail. If you saw the removal video that I did last week, a week before this one, then you'll see that uh, how to do a removal. And I left a little thin layer for protection for the natural nail. So I'm just buffing that. Now, I've done the other ones just to save some time. So I just make sure that's nice and buffed. Cuticle was previously pushed back and I don't have really messy cuticles so there's nothing really to trim and stuff. Then I'm gonna put a dehydrator on that cleans and disinfects the nail. I'll do that on all. Now when you're applying this, you can get it on the skin, you can get it on everywhere. You don't have to be particular. And you can see right there how it just goes everywhere. And you can see it's actually starting to dry as the time goes by. It doesn't take long, maybe less than a minute. So this is your primer. When you're putting your primer on, it's very different. And it comes in this tinted bottle for a reason. It doesn't want to be exposed to the sun. This bottle, it didn't matter so much. It's just a dehydrator. So this one, when you apply this stuff, this is your primer if you're using a primer. And when you place it on, you want to hit the natural. You don't have to hit the um, acrylic whatsoever. It's just to hit the natural nail. Now when it lands on the nail, it kind of absorbs a little bit, like it would on a paper towel. Don't oversaturate the nail. Over use over time, if you oversaturate, it'll get under the nail plate, under the root of the nail, and you can actually become, you know, over time you can get kind of a contact dermatitis or overuse is not good to saturate the nail plate, okay? Now we're gonna form. French is my favorite look of all time. I think it's not being used as much anymore with all the colors and the fades and everything coming in, especially with the um, almond shapes and the pointy shapes. French isn't really commonly used with that as much anymore. But French is the hardest nail to do, the French technique design. Because you're trying to do a half circle in a very limited amount of time with a product. <laughs> you know, drawing it with a piece of paper and a pencil would be very difficult in just one kind of swoop like that to make a perfect circle. But then trying to draw it with product and making it a certain thickness and completely even is very, very difficult when a product is drying on you. You have about 60 seconds, depending on humidity and where you live and temperature, maybe less. Okay, so this is how you form. When you put a form on, you want it to be under. It's a platform to hold the product on. Some studios or nail studios will put a tip on first, but that goes on top of the nail and then it sits everything a little bit higher. It's not as natural. I like a form because it goes below the natural nail. We're trying to extend the natural nail. So actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the next finger because it's just easier to apply when I'm showing you. So if you can see when the form goes on, it's below, not catching the edges, but below the natural nail. And if you don't have a natural nail on the end, you take an educated guess of where that's growing out. What you wanna do is line these ends up. Don't stick these down before you stuck that down. And if you can see that little teardrop loop, that's perfectly formed when you see that it's measured up and you see the angle of it all, that's a very natural flow. If it's too straight, the nail will look kind of unnatural. If it's going up, that's not good either. Okay, let's get started with the product. Now this is a reverse French. I don't often do these because I do it the other way. I don't know what the other way is called, but I'm gonna say it's like a traditional French where you put the white down first. A reverse French is where you put the pink down first. Honestly, I've been doing the traditional way for 30 years and it, to me it's the best. However, once I learned of this new way, the reverse French that's come in in the past few years, I think it's smarter, it's easier to learn, it's easier for me to teach my students that way and they seem to get it better and faster. So honestly, I think it's the way to go.
Okay, so, woo, <laughs> we may lose our power. <laughs> okay, it's a matter of time. We're against the clock here. Okay, so I am using a color by Magnetic. It's sim simply a color of pink that's got some sparkles in it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit more opaque, so you're not gonna see the natural nail through it, which sometimes is an advantage. I use a lot of different pinks, and I have a whole bunch here that I've got. This one is a cover pink, which is very opaque, and it covers, it's very nude. And this is a beautiful, bright, almost a little bit clearer pink. Sometimes I get a little jiggy and I mix them together and I create my Susie mix. And that really is the best look of all. However, for this particular design, I'm going to use this color. Oh, what is it called here? Um, sparkling Nude Pink. It is super, super pretty. And I'm also using it too because on camera you'll be able to see the French design. Okay, so with a French, the French is that smile line of white that goes on the free edge. This is a reverse because we're gonna lay the pink down first and we're gonna shape it into a smile line. But there are a few tricks to know. Okay, so first I'm gonna lay down the nail plate. And we'll do the free edge in a minute. So I'm doing it near the cuticle right now. So I use a lot of the barrel of my brush and not as much as a tip. It may look like I'm using a tip, but I'm really not. So I'm gonna just smooth this off the end because I wanna create the other, the French smile line. So I'm just using the tip a little tiny bit and pushing down here and then I'm slightly gently pulling back. Now I don't wanna come too far because I need my French line to go in there. This exercise, this ball here was just to fill the cuticle area so I don't have to focus on that right now. Okay. I'm getting rid of that because I wanna show you the French. When you're doing this reverse French, you can extend it quite a bit too. You can lay it this way, lay it that way. I'm gonna lay it this way, but I am gonna extend this a little bit to give that look. So when you take this ball, you need to leave gullies on the side so that the white can come up. So I'm gonna blend it kind of backwards into the nail plate that I just did. So I'm leaving the gullies on the side for the white to come right up there for a nice, strong smile line. I just have to figure out how far I want to extend it. Some of the new European techniques coming out of the UK and stuff, they're extending them quite far off the nail bed. It looks really cool. It's not very natural looking, but it looks very cool. So I just have to figure out how far I want to make this guy go. Say right about there that looks good so I'm just gonna soften the cuticle I hate filing too much so I'm gonna soften the cuticle a little bit okay so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll show you how to shape this so now this guy's dry so this is what we're gonna do I haven't done a lot of these so bear with me what you're trying to do is you want to shape this part now you can make this super pointy now that you're shaping it. You can do whatever you want, but it makes it crisp. So when the white goes down and against it, it'll be nice and crisp. You can take this form off and then we can add it again, but you can now shape this to whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a sh like a chevron shape, or if you want it to be roundish, more of a smile line, or you want it to be deep smile line, and almost like a point, this is your chance. You can make it any shape you want and you can make it very, very crisp. Also too, if you don't make this pink high enough, when you put your white in and you file, it'll be all uneven. Okay, this is shaping up. You also have to figure out how deep you want those white smile lines to go back. Okay, make it dust free. Oops. Now I'm gonna reform it. 
this is where the white is going to sit on top of it now. So some I've noticed will file it with the form on it and you can do that. If you can keep the form on in place that's perfect. Okay so the idea now is we're going to take the white bead and we're going to be able to lay it in up against this pink. The trick with white is, white is can be very difficult to work with. You want to do it a bit of a drier ball than you want to do a bit of a wet ball. Now when we lay the white in, you can go as deep as you want. Make sure it comes to a point. I'm going to go square on this nail. Now if you're trying to like sharpen the smile line, you want to do that more with a dry, clean brush than a wet brush. A wet brush, it just doesn't work as well. A dry brush, much more effective. So when you're doing a French, you can do it in one ball. <laughs> oh, the lights are super dimming. I hope I get this done before the power goes. So when you're trying to do your French whites, you can see the points of the white. Each point should try to come down on the same side even. If you were to draw a line across the two, you want it to be to an even point. Doesn't always happen on a natural nail. Now I'm going to square it up on the end. Again, work with a, ooh, we're going to lose power. Work with a bit of a dryer ball. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that's a big power surge. Okay, oh, <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna make it. Okay, so I'm adding the square end to this. Now the beauty of this too, my pink is so high. Honestly, I probably, I'm gonna try it just to see how it works. I could literally just put white on top of this now because my pink was so high, I could put the white on top of it like this and when I file it, it wouldn't really matter. We're gonna put that to the test. So I made the snail quite square and long. Okay, let's wait for that to dry and then we'll file it. Okay, so now the moment of truth, we'll file this guy. He's all dry now. So what I do do though is I make sure I put the lids on everything just because I don't want to get any dust contaminated into my stuff. But I do put my mask on. This is a bit of dust. Just one little prep sometimes I won't, especially for the video, but when I'm doing more than that, I will. You'll see the dust flying. Okay, so this is an awfully long nail. Maybe just for fun for the video, I'll do it this long. Okay, so moment of truth with the top. I'm gonna see if this little trick of mine worked. So my theory is if you make the pink thick enough you can slam on the white anywhere as long as it's shaped right and then you don't really have to lay the white in in a proper spot. You can just lay her down then file and it should come up perfect. We'll see. Whoo it's looking pretty good. Boy, that's, if that works, that's really a great way to do a French. A lot easier than the traditional way. Wow, look at that. It's coming. Now see how I'm getting that nice arch that way? That's really super important. Oh, it's a little thick on the end. Just gonna file it a little bit here. I'm going to take the hand file and shape up the sides. Nice. Wow, that's really an easy way to do it. Let's see. Nice. 
not bad. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like I say, I've been showing this to my some of my students in my class and I am noticing when I taught the traditional way, it's much harder for them to learn. But this is an easier way for them to learn and maybe perfect. The other way takes quite the learning curve. And hey, doesn't really matter which way you do it, as long as the outcome is gorgeous, right? Wow, that's really coming. Okay, so let me clean up the cuticle area. This is my little safety bit again for the cuticle. just want to make sure it's nice and flush so when it grows out it's non-noticeable right no line no edge no ledge nothing just super smooth grub that way a client can go a long time in between and the true sign of a good nail tech in my opinion is what does your nails look like 10 days after you had them done not the day you had them done because when this grow up goes away that ledge it's just a really tough thing to master Wow Okay, so I'm just gonna thin it up, shape it up. It's a little bit thick on the end. I don't know if you can see how thick it is on the end. So I'm just gonna shape it up a bit more and then I'm gonna top coat it with some beautiful clear stuff. And you can see that beautiful pink color with the sparkles in the nail bed that I was bragging about. So I'm just thinning out the end, making it, trying to make it look as natural and thin as possible on the end. Nails don't have to be thick on the end. A lot of people think thicker on the end or thicker in general makes it better, makes it stronger and stuff. No, actually. The thickness is very, very carefully placed and it's not on the end. Wow, that turned out great. Okay, I'm just going to buff it, get it ready for a nice polish. Now this is not changing the shape by any means. This is simply um, just buffing it to the surface and making it super, super smooth. A bit smoother and then we'll put some oil on it and we'll put a top coat on it. Oh, I love the smell of this stuff. It's like almonds or something. It smells so good. Okay, that worked. Look at that. As long as you get your pink nail bed in the shape that you want on the end and make it thick enough, make your pink thick enough, you can just cram that white on in any which way, shape, or form, or black. It'd be a good way to do black, actually, because black is tough. It gets everywhere. And you just make sure that you got your pink shape perfectly. Put the white on, like a blanket on top. Just file it. Beautiful. Let me finish up the rest, and we'll do a reveal shot. <laughs> Well, that was a really interesting way to do a reverse French fill. It was kind of fun, actually. It's actually easier than doing the traditional way, doing the French line first. Thanks for watching, and we got through the storm. I'll see you in the next video.